Right, today we're going to do a, we're going to change the brake master cylinder on our Project Range Rover Sport. We fixed the brakes um, in terms of the binding, but the brake performance is still not right and the brake feel is still not right. So we're going to, and we haven't done this before, so bear with us. And as ever, read the comments below down there because... Um, some of the viewers give extra tips where Dan and I may have inadvertently, in our enthusiasm, missed some details. So, right. So, I'm going to talk about why you might want to do... Right, so why are we changing our brake cylinder? So, if your brake pedal is doing weird things, it could be your brake master cylinder. So, I'm just going to go through how to check your brake servo, which is a key part of the system, and why we are changing our brake master cylinder but there'll be several reasons and it doesn't look too tricky does it Dan we've had a little look we've had a little right so what why are we doing this so um right first of all if you're going to do anything on your brake master cylinder put your bonnet in the extended mode I'll put the link there of how to open it right up um right and then it, it lives under this little cover here Dan let's have a look you're gonna you're gonna get it out from hibernation so it lives in there. So here you can see you've got your your ABS unit here. I think they call it an ABS pump actually, don't they? But yep, the ABS unit, anti-lock braking system. You have got your brake master cylinder with the brake fluid reservoir strapped on top of it. And then behind it, you've got the big round black thing, which is your brake servo, or I think the Americans call it a brake booster. Right, so what is happening in our car? Um, right, so if you get in your car, this is how to test a brake booster. So if you get in your car, actually, Dan, do you want to do the video in? Oh, you come on, this side might be better, Dan. You can see my beautiful feet better this side. Right then. So, um, to start, let me take that key out, right. So if you've driven the car recently, there will be vacuum built up and stored in your brake booster. Now... To test it, you need to get rid of all that air. So I'm going to pump the brake pedal a few times. And you should hear the air because the, the booster is an assisting. It's assisting you pressing the pedal. And it's get it's using vacuum to give you that extra force. So you can hear at the front. And it... I think it's just clunking now. So once you're sure you press that a few times and you've got rid of all the the air out of the system, what you want to do is you want to put your foot on the brake and you can give it a pump a bit if you want and then start the car and what should happen is your foot should sink away a little bit because that's where you're getting the extra boost. So let's have a go here. Now, the trouble is mine keeps going and going and going and going and going and it's now on the floor. So so the brake booster is working, but there's some other problem and that's why we're changing the brake master cylinder. Normally, if your brake pedal keeps going down, it means you're pushing fluid somewhere and it means you'll have a pool under your car. We've checked, we've got no sign of any leaks anywhere. So I think the the fluid is pushing past the seals in the master cylinder. Um, so that's why we're changing it. Right, let's crack on. Then. Right, before we start getting dirty, let's have a look at what we've got. So we reckon we need a socket set with a 13 millimeter socket. And you need to undo the brake pipes, you need an 11 millimeter spanner. But we've gone and bought one of these brake pipe spanners. The advantage of these is they've got a slot to allow you to get it over the pipe. You'll see Dan do this beautifully in a minute. And... But the advantage is it's still, if I go over that blue pack in there, there's our brick part, you can see it still grips on five of the sides, is it one? Yeah, it's not on six sides, but you're less likely to round off the flats than with just a sort of two-sided open-ended spanner. We have our Strange Vets horse syringe, which we're going to use to uh, to get all the old brake fluid out of the reservoir before we remove the reservoir. We've got our new, open up the new, let's have a look what the... Uh, what the um we got this from Brit Part, other supplies are available. Not everyone's a fan of Brit Part, but they they seem to do us sorry, open it, I'll rip it open down. So let's have a look. So as that sits on the car, 
it sits in this sort of orientation. So if you can just hold that there, Dan. And so what we've got is the reservoir sits on the top here. And these two little clips, one each, so one that side and one that side, they're where the reservoir is strapped to. So we're going to remove, the, you won't be able to see this but very well, but Dan's going to like lever the little ears apart and then we're going to prise that off, the reservoir. You've got the two output pipes here, one and here, which is where the two brake pipes, that's where your fluid is pushed. And this is your plunger that sits in the servo and the two bolts mounting it on are sort of diagonally opposite. You've got one there, and then just up at there you go, and one there. So that's all we really need to know about that. Um, right, so let's put that to one side. And right, what should we do first? Should we get rid of the fluid first, Dan? You reckon I'm going to get rid of the fluid? So undo the cap. He's got his horse syringe ready. So there's a little, there's a little, let me just show that. So there's a little bit you've got to press here, there. If you press that down, then you can release that electrical connector, which is, which tells you when you've run out of fluid. Right, and then you can unscrew that, cap. Now, careful you don't dribble it everywhere. We've got some blue roll there, Dan, so you could just put a bit of blue roll in the bottom. You've got this massive area here. Good. There's loads of room in there, isn't there, Dan? Yeah, Get Dan's lunch in there. Look at the size of that. You ain't got a hot treacle pudding for lunch today again, have you, Dan? That was out of order no, the other day. Right. So there you go, we've got to put that in there. We'll clean it later, don't get it dirty because we need to put that back in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to suck out the fluid out of this reservoir with this syringe. In Dan's previous life, you, you used syringes, didn't you? And I don't mean that people are going to think you were a druggie, no. <laughs> yeah. Right, now I think this is in two halves, Dan. If you look at it, I think there's a split. So you may have to reposition your proboscis. Now, you might have to put it upside down, Dan. To get rid of the air you used to do that did you you ever do that in medical yeah wait there you go yeah so yeah you see can you see from the side here dan how it's, it's got like two chambers to it so you may have to get yeah. your probe try and work out where you've got to stick your probe to and i think that's if one side runs out is that fluid level there or is that a mark yeah still a lot of fluid in there dan let's have a look what we can Right, we'll leave Dan to, to fathom out how to get all the fluid out of that for a minute, and then he, he can share it with us in a minute. Right, so we've worked out our first mistake. So inside the brake mask, there's a little sieve liner pot, like an inner little sleeve that we're going to take out. Now, I just will remind everyone now, brake fluid is dangerous. Don't get it in your eyes. Don't get it. Don't eat it. Um, also, it will damage paintwork, so just be careful when you're working, not to get any on your paint, dribble it down, try and minimise where you're spilling it. Right and Dan, so we've worked this out. Yep. So there's a little inner sleeve bit there, and it's a bit slimy. So what, we tried drawing it, but if you can get a pair of needle nose pliers just in the gap, right, watch your face Dan, yep, don't squirt it everywhere. He can come out with a bit of a motion, so he's he sort of gripped in, and also you'll notice there's a little bit of fluid you get left in the bottom there. Is he, oh, I'll let him drain out. He's probably got a hole at the bottom there. Yeah, yeah rather than dribble it everywhere. Or I could bring over the pot to you, Dan. <laughs> Speed it up a bit. Yeah. Right, okay. So that's that inner liner. We'll clean that in a minute. We shouldn't put it in a dirty pot. But I'll either put it on a bit of cloth, but we're speeding it up for the video. Right. So now, Dan, you should better get in there with your proboscis. And you should better give that a... Now, that, again, the two chambers this story that I was waffling on about earlier still might have some relevance. Well, that's taken some... <laughs> can you see inside now, Dan? Can you see yeah. the two chambers? Because I think the idea is one of your brake circuits fails, you, you lose half your brake fluid but the rest of it will remain on the other circuit but they get all complicated now all right we'll keep going right so our plan has sort of failed although it's good so we've drained most of the fluid out of there so we're not going to spill it the last bit you can't actually get out um so we are not going to detach the reservoir 
while it's in the engine bay. We are going to take it out on the bench and disconnect it there. But we've got rid of most of the fluid, so we're not going to spill it anywhere accidentally. We've put the cap back on the top. Um, we were just having a discussion while we are doing that about brake fluid being hydroscopic, which means it absorbs water over time from the air. So it's that's one of the reasons why you should change your brake fluid. And some of the brake fluid we got out of that reservoir was pretty murky looking mm -hmm. stuff, wasn't it? Um, right, we digress. So the next thing I think we'll do, Dan, should we do those pipes? The vacuum pipe. Vac actually, yeah, disconnect the vacuum pipe. That's a good, gives us a bit more room. Now, depending whether you've used your brakes or not, and whether you've run your car, you may get a little... <laughs> like that. So there's a little... Show us the little pressy bit, Dan. Yeah, them two. Yeah, so you press those two together, squeeze those, and that will release the vacuum pressure there. And then you can just tuck those two ends out the way. The idea being to give us a bit more, a bit more room to get that reservoir out. What do you want to do first? Then I reckon do the brake pipes first, Dan, while it's still all rigid. Yep. So get that special brake pipes banner that we've all been waiting to see you use. That's eleven mil. That's it. Oh, that was easy. We hadn't even undone that. That looked like we cheated there, Dan. Mm. Right, yeah, once he's spinning, you probably spin it with your gloves, Dan. They want... I might just grab that torch so we can see what you're doing a bit more. Hold on. All right, there we go. A bit more light on it. So yeah, once a, now once it, you should be able to slide it back down the pipe a little bit, Dan, and then we know it's disengaged. But the but it'll sort of always be the pipe will tend to keep it in there. Yet yeah? you're spinning that other one out. You can't really see what you're doing, but it's going on forever. There we go. Right. Okay. So you can see how Dan's sort of put the union down the pipe a bit. Right. So now that's all done. So the last thing then is those two bolts that we can see. So can you just point those out, Dan? There's one mm -hmm. there. Little, no, up a bit, up a bit. You can't see, that's it, yeah, there. One there, and then the other oh. one's down under there. Oh, no. Right, we'll see it once you get in there. So what have you got, a 13 mil socket, you've got a deep reach and a little extension. Yeah. You're gonna go for the easy one first. I am. Whoa! So we, should, we shouldn't expect any fluid to spill. There might be a little bit leaking out of those unions. Is there any? Well, there probably not. Unless you press the brake pedal, it'll only be what's in the pipe there. Not have to undo a bit more. Have you gone? Let's have a look at the nut. Put it on the top of here for me, Dan, when you're done. Oh, you lost him. Yeah, well, he's jammed in the corner there. Yeah, I can see him in there. That's it. Good use of the magnet top. Yeah, so there's the bolt there. Wait for the camera to focus. Right, it's not a lock nut or anything, right? And you've got to get in that other one, Dan. So you've got a little bit of a wobble on your extension, haven't you? Yeah. Which might give you a little bit of a chance. I can... It's not too bad, though. You have got quite a lot of room to work. You gonna get the angle on it? I think so. Don't round it off. Dan did just change for a small socket, not an extended socket for this one. He wasn't happy with that long socket. But you could perhaps get a spanner in there, but I think that socket will do it. Right, we can see the whole thing getting... Now, I don't think you need to worry too much about losing the nut. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a total abyss down there. I'll just hope it, hope it stays in the socket then. Put, yeah, take the. See if you can spin it off and catch it in the socket. Right, we've dropped, we've dropped there. We'll see how difficult it is to find them. Right, now that should be ready to lift out. Now what you've got to do then is just guide those two pipes. Don't bend them too much, but just guide them out one at a time because they're sort of stuck in half an inch. And then just put it underneath and that's it, and get that other one out. Then you should better just pull that 
That other one might go back in. Watch the pipes on this side as you wiggle it. That's it. There's nothing holding it in. It should come. He's fighting you, Dan. He's fighting you. That's it. All right. Get it out and let's have a little victory. Round of applause for Dan. It's like your first master cylinder ever, Dan. Do you reckon you'll remember your first master cylinder for the rest of your life, Dan? I did one on a beetle. Oh, he's done one on a beetle. He's a pro, look. Right, so there we go. So what we've now got to do is detach that. So we're just going to drain that fluid out and get that cleaned up. And we'll come back and show you how to... Don't drip it anywhere, Dan. Show you how to uh, detach the reservoir. So we're just showing... I was just showing Dan how the the um, brake master cylinder works. It's like a water pistol. When you push the plunger, push don't, don't push it, just point to the plunger you're going to push. When you push that in... Um, then you will get water, uh, water you'll get uh, brake fluid coming out of, show us the two things, you might only get it out of one. I right, go on then, Dan. There you go, you can see it coming out. Right, so that's, that's the, uh, that's how a brake master cylinder works. It's just like a water pistol, really. Right, so now we're going to take off that reservoir. So you've got to remove those two ears, I guess one at a time, Dan. Uh, so you've got that, so you can just put your... You just push them out sideways and then sort of try and twist it. Ah, is that broken or no? That's gone. No, that's all right. Gone. Careful because the, the plastic can be brittle. But then you've got to like push that hole. But don't push on the tabs. Let me push on the body of the... Because they're on like, like quite tight rubber. That one's gone back on. That one's gone back on. Yeah, you're going to... Um, we could put it in the vice to save you a need in three hands. I'll try to give you a hand. Oh gosh, that is tight. Vice. Yep, vice. Right, so we've put it in the vice with the rubber choke. Don't want to squeeze that too hard. And then there you're going to have to push those up. And then... Oi! Oh, not... Right, so he's, he's fighting us a little bit. But we've, we've come up with plan C. And that's we're going to put a little bit of wood in under there. And we, we are going to... Right, now, Dan, if you... you hold on, have you released the ears? You've released the yeah, ears, yeah? yeah? Both ears. And, and then you can sort of lever against that. There you go. And it comes up, and it's got like a little. You got the rubber things there, and you got the barbs. Let me have a look at these little tops here. So you got the little barbs. So that's the problem. It looks like they'll go back in a lot easier because they're they're tapered. So we'll clean all that up because we're gonna we're gonna swap that over onto the new master cylinder. So we'll go in now. The new master cylinder does it come with you're dripping? Um, does it come with new? We'll have a look that it comes with new. New ones of those, we'll have to swap them over. Let's go and have a look. So yeah, whenever you're putting new stuff on, always check your old one against your new one. Check your outlets are the same. Check the dimensions are the same. Always worth doing. Um, and we're all looking good there, Dan, aren't we? Yep. So I can remove those two orange, orange, yellow. Oh, colours with Simon. Yeah, and that other, I reckon that other yellow one there. And then that's all looking the same, isn't it? So I reckon then you should be able to just get that reservoir. Now make sure you get it pointing the right way. Right, right. Is it yet? Yeah, because the clips, yeah, it's sort of foolproof or self-evident, whichever way you want to look at it. And then you're going to have to ram that on and it force itself in those little barbie bits. It should sort of go and then... One of them's gone. Guess we could put a bit of that rubber, red rubber grease around it if we. Whoa. There you go. Yeah, and that clips in, right? You got one on. That's it. You happy with that, Dan? Yeah. Right, we're gonna go for lunch, and then we'll come back, and we'll have a go at putting that back on. Right, Dan's done a good job. He's got it all back together there. So good luck with that. Now you will have to bleed the brakes. So obviously, you've got to top up your reservoir with new brake fluid. Dot four brake fluid. Um, then you've got to bleed all your brakes to get the air out. Now, we will do a separate video because in theory, especially when you've introduced a lot of air here, because our our master cylinder is completely empty of fluid, obviously it's a new one, then you're going to get problems with your ABS because your ABS starts doing things. And what you need to get is a diagnostics tool that can do the service sequence. And what it will do, you'll plug it into your ODB, 
two port and it'll make your ABS pump go at the same time as you bleed in it. It like opens and closes all the valves, does some witchcraft and magicery, and it'll allow all the air to be bled through the ABS pump. So we will do another video on that, but we'll leave you there. That's the new brake master cylinder fitted to a Range Rover Sport. I imagine it's pretty much the same for Discovery 3 and 4. Good luck with that.